To kick off the conference, it is now my pleasure to invite the Precision Public Health Asia 2021 Local Organising Chair, Associate Professor Jeremy Lim, to deliver his welcoming address. Jeremy also helms the school's Leadership Institute for Global Health Transformation as his director. Jeremy, please. And a very good morning to all of you based in Asia. And to those in the US and outside, uh, thank you for joining us after hours. Uh, firstly, let me wish everyone Happy World Health Day. Right, today, April 7th, uh, has been celebrated as World Health Day since 1950. And I think in the midst of a global pandemic, it's so meaningful that we pause to reflect on what health means for all of us. Right, I am pleased to report that since the first conference in Fremantle in 2018, we now um, we have really progressed so much. And in this conference, we have over 2,000 registered delegates from 52 countries. And I do recall uh, Professor David Preen and his colleagues from, from Australia and I, when we discussed the conference back at the end of 2018 of bringing the meeting into Singapore, um, the emphasis was really placed on the why. Right. Uh, why is it that we need to bring precision into public health and how can precision public health be a better way of practicing public health? But now, more than a year into a global pandemic, um, the orientation has really shifted. There is no longer any need to ask why. Right? All the skeptics have been converted 110% and, and the emphasis of this conference has likewise pivoted away from the why precision public health to the how of precision public health. I wanted to say very quickly that we are awash in data and in real-time analysis However, how do we distinguish the signal out of all this noise and how do we join these disparate dots together? I am struck that in, my, in, our, in our organizing um, host country, Singapore, that many of the non-traditional players have really come into the public health space and lent a helping hand through use of data. Two examples that I'll highlight, um, DBS Bank, which is Singapore and Southeast Asia's largest bank, um, uh, in August did an analysis of 1.2 million of his retail customers and found that 26% of them suffered a more than 10% drop in their income. And out of this 26%, about one third of them suffered a fall in income of more than 50%. And all of us as public health practitioners appreciate the social determinants of health are so important and really poor outcomes in education, in, in health, in social uh, situations, they tend to cluster together. And quite interestingly, um, a bank can help us as public health practitioners to identify those who are at risk. And I'm sure likewise for credit card agencies and really so on. A second example I would highlight is uh, and that would be Google through its community mobility reports. And and it really brings numbers into what many of us anecdotally feel. For example, here in Singapore, if one looks at the latest uh, Google Community Mobility Report, um, you would realize that 68%, there's been a 68% drop from the mean or really from the norm in terms of workplace activity. And this number is 31% uh, decline in public transport, which anecdotally we would also sense. And I raised these two examples of a technology company as well as a bank to really illustrate that precision public health is not a concept of really um, old wine in new bottles, but it's a fundamentally very different paradigm of bringing in a much wider pool of stakeholders because on World Health Day, we, we remember the World Health Organization's uh, prior maxim, health for all, and truly there can be health for all and health for all can be contributed by really everyone. So what this conference has done is to pull together an absolute stellar group of speakers and for that I am very very grateful that many that many have taken the time to spend with us to share their insights um, as as alluded to earlier we are more than 2,000 registered participants and it's a very good mix of practitioners technologists public health professionals academics as well as policy makers 
And finally, I want to call out again our deep appreciation for all our sponsors. Um, and in particular, our platinum sponsors, Illumina and Roche Pharmaceuticals, our gold sponsors, Novartis and Sysmax, as well as Amazon Web Services, Health Catalyst and AIA. It's a very eclectic mix, which is very, very um, um, timely because it's really precision public health is really about all of us coming together to make public health better. And on this note, can I introduce Professor Kenneth Mark, uh, who is our guest of honor today. Uh, Kenneth is well known to all young doctors and once upon a time I was young and I, and I recall that over 20 years ago, uh, Kenneth then as a young registrar used to conduct um, lessons over the weekends for all of us who were training to be surgeons. And, uh, and it was very clear even 20 years ago that, um, that even as a very accomplished surgeon, he brought a strong systems lens and a very open mindset into the, the then world of surgery. And I'm so delighted that he has broadened his, his sphere of, of, really, of really influence from surgery into public health and into uh, be, and being effectively the chief medical officer of, of his country, Singapore, and, and to bring his skills to bear. So uh, I, I think Singapore has valuable lessons coming out of COVID, both good and bad. And I think Kenneth is certainly the right person to address us today as he kicks off Precision Public Health Asia 2021. So Kenneth, can I hand the time over to you? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning from Singapore. It's my pleasure to join you today at the Precision Public Health Asia Conference. With advances in technology and research, we have a growing capability to use diagnostic tests, which better identify individuals with a high risk for developing chronic diseases and to stratify them based on their risk of developing complications. Our treatment capabilities have also expanded to allow greater precision in designing individualized treatment plans to optimize clinical outcomes. But we need an overarching strategy to guide how this knowledge, the use of new therapies can be appropriately utilized for our population. Public health policy has become the vehicle for us to develop these strategies and to implement them in our delivery of healthcare services. Precision public health is an amalgamation of medicine, precision medicine and public health. And to quote uh, Muin uh, J. Corey, the director of the Office of Public Health Genomics at the CDC in the US, precision public health is about bringing the right interventions at the right time, every time, to the right populations. Data plays a crucial role in harnessing the potential of precision public health. Data on population level health indicators allows policymakers to formulate more targeted measures and campaigns to address the health needs of their citizenry. There are many programs and initiatives implemented globally that utilize precision public health. They share in common the aim of improving population health, promoting a better quality of life, changing lifestyle practices, and potentially bringing about lower healthcare expenditure. I understand that conference delegates will be discussing various case studies over the next few days to better understand the potential of precision public health initiatives. And this morning, I'd like to share three examples of how precision public health is being applied in Singapore to benefit Singaporeans and residents. Advances in precision public health capabilities have allowed the Ministry of Health here in Singapore to better utilize the increasing volume of data that we have collected over the years. When formulating public health campaigns, Singapore leverages on technology and uses the data to encourage Singaporeans to lead active and healthier lifestyles. For example, we have the National Steps Challenge that aims to promote a healthier lifestyle amongst Singapore citizens and residents. It was first launched by the Health Promotion Board in 2015. It leverages behavioral insights and technology to motivate participants to improve and incorporate physical activity as part of their daily life. It also tailors rewards for sustained behavioral change when users reach different physical activity milestones. A second application of precision public health is in chronic disease management. Digital biomarkers and other digital metrics can be collected in real time. 
combined with genomic data and traditional physiological and demographic information. And collectively, these data then enable more accurate risk assessment and early interventions. An example is familial hypercholesterolemia, an inherited condition that leads to higher rates of heart attack and vascular disease in affected people when they are young. And this is one of several priority diseases that our national precision medicine research strategy is targeting as early identification and treatment of such individuals and their affected family members is cost effective in preventing severe disease as well as decreasing morbidity and mortality. A third application of precision public health is in Singapore's fight against COVID-19. In Singapore, precision public health has been applied in the use of precision technology and IT solutions across a continuum of measures taken to prevent and control the disease. And let me provide three further examples. First, in preventing spread through importation, the use of wearable devices has allowed incoming travelers to serve their on-arrival quarantine outside of dedicated facilities while maintaining a high degree of compliance. This has reduced the need for dedicated resources and facilitated travelers self-isolating in their own homes while simultaneously maintaining the public health imperative of, ha of having incoming travelers quarantined for the required period. Second, in the contact tracing of individuals possibly exposed to COVID-19, the use of applications such as safe entry and trace together has provided definitive exposure history to investigation teams. This has facilitated the accurate and tailored public health assessment for quarantine of affected individuals and outbreak management. Third, in epidemiological investigations, the use of whole geno uh, genome sequencing on COVID-19 possible uh, positive cases has enhanced epidemiological investigation capability in determining transmission patterns. And this has allowed the prompt rollout of subsequent public health measures that are targeted to the situation at hand. While precision public health has immense benefits, the greater use of personal data and data analytics requires that we exercise greater responsibility and accountability in order to maintain public trust. In this regard, data privacy and cybersecurity are important governance issues that must be addressed. The Ministry of Health is developing a common set of information and communication technology policies and standards known as the Health Technology Instruction Manual for Public Health Care. This common policy set draws from the government's own ICT management policies as a base and can be adapted for use in different healthcare settings based on the needs of public healthcare providers. And this allows for information technology to be used consistently in a manner which is both effective and secure. Overall, the relevance of precision public health has never been greater. Today, we find ourselves in the midst of a global pandemic confronted by a growing myriad of diseases and ailments that threaten to afflict populations in developing and developed countries alike. The use of precision public health allows us to collaborate further across countries, specialties and disciplines, to share best practices, information and resources. This conference is one such opportunity for us to have more of these collaborative conversations. To conclude, Singapore is honored to host the Precision Public Health Asia Conference this year. And we aspire to work together with the local and international community to be at the forefront of novel and emergent technologies and to provide Singaporeans with the benefits that these technologies can bring. It is my hope that this conference will facilitate the pursuit of these agendas in a meaningful, fruitful and lasting way. Thank you.